you at then, John? Uh, have you ever watched Lord of the Rings? There's a big fella in a pointy hat, right? He's called Gandalf. And there's a scene where they're standing and they can just see it coming towards them. And he says this line, and I just think it's appropriate. It better be good, so hit me with it. At last we come to it. The great battle of our time. And that's it. Yes. The stress is getting his head, everybody. Y'all ready for this? Action. <laughs> action, action! Time for happy face. Is there not something missing? What? I thought before you went on screen you get the service of a nice young makeup artist. <laughs> I think there's so much, like, there's too much to say that you'll not need all of Sorry, it. Let's have it all. Okay. On the poll, 23, first popped into my head whenever we were in this very building doing a blog, Brian and Connor were, and just out of nowhere, a random conversation, they just dropped in. On the pole, mate. On the pole. Get it back. Coming soon. Yeah. 2023, <laughs> what's yeah. that space? And like, I hadn't said anything to them to provoke them to say that, but I planted a wee seed in my head. And that wee seed just started to burn. <laughs> John talked about on the pole for a long time, off and on, and he was going on and on about it. And I was just at the stage, I said, either do it or stop talking. And I think that was the push he needed. Whether, whether I was right or wrong, I suppose that's for, the, for you as the viewer to decide. But any time I hear, I have palpitations because I just think of that trailer going over at that time. Flemings were very good to us now, and, and I think a lot of people said it was good publicity, the strength of their trailer, but it still, it just rose sort of the awareness in my mind as to, you know, the responsibility of the event as well. But as Leslie, John's daddy, had said at that time, you know, it was great publicity and having that footage really showed everybody what they missed in 2019. We're either going to do this again or we're not. You know, it's just one of the things. Like, if we don't do it, we're never going to do it again. And the problem was, that was December they shot that blog. So we're like, this is all through January. This is starting to, like, just eat away at me. You learn about farm flicks that John has a notion it's going to happen, so there's no point fighting it. There's no... You can point out your your problems or your disagreements, but it just means John will find a way around it. So, yeah, on the pole was happening, and that was the start of it all again. It was thankfully this time I took, I'd say, a very big back seat. I didn't have near as much stress. Thankfully, one of our newer employees, Mr. Mark Sterling, oh, he just got thrown in at the deep end. That was hats off to him. The event wouldn't happen without Mark, but yeah, he got, he got an education, so he did. We'll say that. So maybe not a lot of people know, but I only started in February 23. So uh, sitting in the blue container, the famous blue container with John and Alan, and the subject of on the, on the pool comes up. Obviously, I've been involved in the 2019 version very briefly, and I don't think I've seen any tractors that day at all, because I was literally running around about like a headless Egypt fitting GoPros that day. 2023 was uh, like that was, I think Alan was the, the biggest pusher for it at the start, and he just basically wanted to know yes or no. I suppose it was a day or two since On the Pole had been mentioned because of COVID and all the rest. Got a break from it, wasn't, I suppose, sure if it was going to happen again. It was a big discussion a whole lot of times whether or not to go ahead from the first one to what would you have had to do the second time. Uh, it just was a different ball game altogether. The biggest challenge was trailers. How do we find trailers? I wanted six. I wanted them identical, strong and long and a bit unique. It had to be fit for purpose. And we obviously learnt with the wee trailer flipping and things before that we needed something that was going to be sturdy and something that was going to be safe. And we knew we had to do it bigger, better, faster. I didn't know where to start, to be honest, but I had run into James Rooney from Red Rock at the playing match in September before, and I just got this vibe. You know, that guy might actually listen to this crazy idea that I have for this version two of On The Pole, and might actually consider getting me six trailers. So we'll have a shot. John Allen and Brian, I think, went up to Red Rock to talk to them guys, and I remember the tension. It was like, 
the big, you know, is it going to happen? You know, I had to wait three or four days for the sign off from Red Rock to say if we're going to do it or not. So somehow, somehow, he got it. James got it. He understood what I was trying to achieve and understood that it's a long game plan. We're going to run this three, four, five times at least. That these trainers, if we build them, it's possible that this is going to be huge. You know, they, they took a punt. They, they, I guess it's a risk too. They didn't know what was going to be delivered in the end at the event. And I think James in ways is similar to John. They, they like things done right. I don't know a lot about trailers, but I'm told that they're great. <laughs> so I've never, never used a trailer myself, but um, I know that they're great quality, great spec. And the fact that they were just so willing to be involved and it, it's a great partnership that we're, we're extremely thankful for. That's a challenge of going to anyone in February that's running a factory. I don't know how James managed it, but he squeezed us into his build schedule and he got us six beautiful trailers. And not only just to lend us six trailers, they were able to actually respect and make them specifically for what we were wanting. It was actually a pleasure meeting James. He's a great man to talk to and his great brains. Even things we hadn't thought about in the trailer, he was switched on. You know, it was a joint effort into what we needed and James made it happen. I mean, they're heavy duty. They're like a, a, a low loader body on a trailer chassis. I was determined had to be, you know, up out of the ground and, and tall and like flotation tires on. We needed obviously a good flotation system and we needed a good center of gravity and a good solid trailer to carry the weight. And John and, and James were in contact most of the time about design and, and uh, then we got the first trailer, the prototype. We could load up the trailers whatever we wanted with the concrete, which, which was a fantastic idea. I can't cr take credit for that one, but that was, that was a good idea. Uh, it meant we had a lot of variability on the day to run whatever weight we wanted on the, every class. And, I think even the competitors were quite surprised by that and they, they could see that it was a good system. When we ran on the pole 2019, we had a load of lessons. I mean, we learned so much off the prototype event. And one of the big ones, sell tickets. Sell tickets and shut the gate. Bombs on seats, secured, we've got a budget to run this thing. To sell tickets, you've got to drum up a bit of uh, enthusiasm for this event. So right away, put it out there. Here's the spaces to come to this event, like right out the gate. Within half an hour, we had five or 10 tractors booked in. I was just blown away by how fast some of these guys jumped in. Andy Morton booked in right away, Cooks booked in right away. And it, it actually meant a lot to me <laughs> because it just said so much that in version one, they enjoyed themselves so much, straight back in for version two. So that was tractors booking in. We also had to sell, obviously, spectator tickets. And the big reason to sell spectator tickets was to give great James on the trailers the green light. Like, OK, we've got an audience. Go, start making trailers. He had this idea, if he didn't sell 1,000 tickets, it wasn't going to happen. So I thought, even if we've only 500 people, we'll have to go on. But by the end of it, I realised I do not want to be in sales. I was exhausted, so. To get a bit of hype going, to get a bit of buzz going, obviously, when I met a few of the competitors, uh, a few big names attending this year, Johnny Neal, all when not young coming back to put to right <laughs> the events of the previous uh, previous year. Of course, went and met a couple of new characters, uh, Donkey 262, competing this year. I genuinely didn't realise he'd been there until he told me on camera I was at the first one. I loved it. So like again, it just felt right that someone who had spectated then wanted to compete. You're telling me you were at the original oh, Mark right. 1 prototype on the pole? Yep, you oh, were there. I, oh, wow. I was there. Describe son. to me your favourite moment. Big hail stains. <laughs> I might have big hail stains that day. No. Bart and seen have you. On the pull is back, baby. So the big thing you need to remember is when the tickets go on sale, which is Sunday the 3rd of March. And you can find the ticket sales on www.onthepull.co. Farmflex website will also have a link. Just Google on the pull, you, you'll find us. Can't miss it, can't miss so, it. So we got the ball rolling. We had our target. Green light to James. Make the trailers. There's no reversion at this stage. We're now committed. So we'd hired Lisa, the PR angel, and she was really good then at getting us a bit of coverage in the local newspapers. And she also got organised then that we went to the air ambulance and um, got some photos there. John brought the John Deere, and I wish I'd borrowed Alan's beanie hat because my hair and everyone was a sight. Thanks to uh, all the drivers that booked in, we actually managed to raise 
about six grand through tractor donations and another couple of grand totaling just over eight thousand pounds for the air ambulance ni from the audience donations and the tractor driver deposits so as well as having a great day's crack we managed to raise a few quid for a worthy cause next was all the the the, the the tedious logistical stuff, all the, the things that nobody really cares about, it just happens on the day, but you know, your, your marquees and your sound systems and your various things. The big one for me that was this year was the safety. Bigger audience, bigger risk, and the, the seesawing that I did <laughs> and the debating in April, May as to, will that be safe, will that not be safe, whatever, you know, it, it just, it was like a roller coaster of emotions. As much as we all loved to see the trailer flipping, it was entertaining. It's it raised issues. After all, we want to have the best days crack ever. We do not want anybody, competitors, spectators, anybody getting hurt. And we were trying to think of any ways to get round it. What could we do to make it safer? Uh, and concrete blocks was the best option we could come up with. We've lined the box this year with big concrete margin, and that was Mirror Concrete did that for us. Uh, loaned us those barriers, which was fantastic. Not having to buy barriers to run an event, to not need the barriers for the rest of the year. That was, from a health and safety point of view, that eliminated any danger to the viewing public. Like, I was greatly concerned in the first one with the Sort of crowd barrier thing, like the steel crowd barrier. Somebody had have collapsed, somebody panicked, lost control of the tractor. I didn't, I was dread it, I just couldn't bear to think what the outcome would be. I don't know what that didn't cost, like, but that was a great idea, so it was, and I was a lot happier to see that, like, because it didn't matter what happened, that would have stood up to the impact of the tractor where the oral barriers just would have folded it. So that as people contributing made the event happen, we needed them, we took a lot of pressure and stress off, you weren't worrying about what could go wrong. As well as that, they actually supplied the weights that we set onto the trailers. So last time you remember, we ran with uh, water cubes, which were taller, bigger, chunkier, sat out really wide, the full width of the trailer. And obviously the big thing was whenever you heal them off the trailer, it just soaks the ground. So just wanted to get away from all that, simplify life, concrete block, Chain it on, strap it down, job done. Prior to the event, we were advised that we needed to have holding statements. And I didn't know what a holding statement was. So a holding statement is what you would read to the media if something bad goes wrong. So it is a bit morbid, you know, if someone gets injured or, or worse, what we would say. And that I lost sleep over these holding statements because I thought, what if we need to use these? And, and that's why there was so much effort put into barriers and concrete barriers and safety briefings, which was quite sober and I created these um, holding statements back in April and John then he reviewed them on the Friday night before the event at about one o'clock in the morning they said you're not letting me go to the shower and I was like no because you have to review these in case we need them. We had one other huge issue uh, you imagine I'm selling tickets to this field you know we hit the, tar hit the target we wanted to hit here's the number we, we wanted to hit to make it a viable event you know it was like a thousand people or 1500 people something like that but we kept selling just because we could and we had a deadline and we weren't there yet and we're like, right, we'll just keep selling until we have the deadline. So being a failed, you think, ah, oh, a failed. And you know, Alan's saying to me, oh, no problem car park and whatever you need, just, we'll just keep going. And we hit the magic number of three and a half thousand adult tickets and we were letting kids in for free. <laughs> so in total, we actually sold about 5,000 tickets. So. When I sat down to myself and thought, let's do the Maz this wee minute. Uh, here's the perimeter of the box, the, the, the viewable area, the best viewed areas. And if we stand like three deep, we'll have this amount of people. That was not 5,000 people. So it just, it occurred to me instantly. Some people are not gonna ever get you here today and they're not gonna enjoy this event. And, and that's the most important thing to me, that no matter whether you're a driver or a spectator, same as last time, you go home with a smile on your face. So problem number one right away then became grandstand. How do we get people a view? Considered everything under the sun, like earth bank, wood chip with a, a blanket on, raised platform, scaffold, trailers, HGVs, and everything was eliminated one by one by one by one, either on price or on safety or practicality. And bottom line is we had to buy a grandstand. Now, 
that was not cheap. <laughs> it was something we, we debated, how will we fund that? You know, we tried, um, we tried around Balmoral Show talking to lots of different companies and they were all very kind and they all said, we talked about 20, they said they'd fund us back, um, but nobody did. And I think maybe the companies didn't understand what we were creating. They didn't actually realise like this is going to be a professional event with a lot of people. Much more elaborate, more professional looking this time, so it was. Everybody, you know, we've been set up between the days before, so everybody was talking, wanting to know what was going on, so this was going to be something big. People, I think, were amazed when they came in and seen this big, massive grandstand. They didn't, I don't think anybody realised. Obviously, we'd put stuff up on socials, but once you're there and you see it and in the flesh, and it's, it's a real amazing thing to see. Fireflakes paid for that and made it happen. And thank you to the members who support us every single week watching the videos. Uh, it was your support that allowed us once again to run on the pole successfully, hand in hand with Mirrors and Red Rock. You've all the heavy lifting on this stage. You've, you've sold all your tickets and you're not close enough to your event to really do anything. So you hit this lull. So we, we go filming, we do what we do at Farmflex. We go filming and we make episodes and weather finally arrives in May. I think it was the third week of May, the weather finally picked up. Didn't get much of a summer last year. Fantastic summer this year. We got four full weeks of sunshine. Four steady weeks, fantastic ground, heart of the road. We we're all knackered from all the filming and, and pleased almost to see the rain arrive. And personally, I'm thinking, I'm looking at my calendar, I'm like, you know, if it had been dry right through to, you know, two weeks before the event, I'd be like, this is not good. It's going to break and it's going to be a wet event. <laughs> Famous last words, I guess. I genuinely could not believe we managed to run it. The ground conditions had got, the, just the rain was unreal. It has been raining for how many weeks solid, Rachel? Uh, five, six weeks. Five, this is our sixth week. I'd say next week's our seventh. I've been looking at the forecast all week going, no! Well, you take the end of June, start of July. That's most boys is trying to rent up the hay. Uh, we were lucky we got hay made, we went early. If you didn't have that early hay, you weren't getting it. Just rain, 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 rain. That was nothing. Boys couldn't get silage cut, let alone make hay. Compared to any other year, like it was, I was like, it was like something was against you for the event. Like you just could not plan. From the first one, hailstones hitting on the head, to this time, oh, the rain coming up to it. I've seen bad summers. But I don't recall any summer where there was such a long, uh, persistent rainfall. Sure, the day it was meant to have rain. And oh, it's raining, it's coming tonight. Right. Look, it's raining over there. That is but, rain but right. in front of us. You see just there? It is lashing it down. The thing is, John, it's over there. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. you. Know? I hear you. About 10 days before, John arrived in the yard and he just said, well, we'll pull the plug, is it over? And I was a wee bit, you're a wee bit too far in to, to call it quits now. The big thing, John was more worried, I think, about us on the ground and didn't want to annoy Dad. It was at the stage that, like, your marquees was already booked, your grandstand paid for everything. There was no option but the run. Said John, you work away, you wreck the ground, not big seven eight, put a ply on, if worse comes the worst. So both me and Dad, that stage was it's it's happening. It's just we'll worry about that later. That's tomorrow's problem. I thought we could build this whole thing in one week. Set two two weeks before on the advice of my colleagues Mark and Alan. And boy am I glad we did. Day one, disaster. We used this beast to unload the concrete the first day yeah. in the field when the first lorry showed up and we rotted the whole gateway like crazy and the field just about carried it. So nice shiny new 400 hour telehandler from Blue Hire who helped us a lot with this event and we got half the barriers placed. Uh, we significantly marked the field. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see it? The primary gateway for coming off the road, like I mean the, the primary gateway, the easiest access to the field for HTVs, ripped to pieces. And I'm like, what do we do? Disaster. Called 
Cross and Andre, here, you don't have pallet toes for your digger by any chance. Oh, aye, lad, no problem. <laughs> I says, like, you aren't free any chance. <laughs> I could do, I give, give me a day. Sunday the 3rd of March, we got the ticket sales going live. And not only that, a bit different this year, we have Farmflix's big weekend, who we're gonna have at our big concert. We have some top talent for you. We've got two banging artists. One's a local boy, Colin Graham, and we've got Michaela Fredrickson coming in from England, and boy, she can sing. We're now gonna nurse four blocks of time up to the field and lift them off with a digger. Ideal time. That was slower but it got them in without, again, much damage doing the ground. The weather will always be your big challenge. All outdoor events is run with an element of risk. You can't run an outdoor element without taking a risk, so you can't. Oh. I realised I may have left myself a very, very, very awkward way of getting out of this <laughs> yard. Connors and my flipping turning spot, like classic. I call Clyde Yard the obstacle course. Uh huh. All right. I can't see the back corner, but it's very easy. That's why I'm being so ginger about it. It's all getting very tight on here, boys. Right, I'll see if I've really missed this. The tail swing. Do you keep an eye on the tail swing there, for Mary? Uh -huh. Holy. <laughs> Thank God. I think you were sure before, before, you know. Before, you know. <laughs> so you know what Alan's yard's like. You've seen it. First thing I had to do was persuade him, let me pull out that extra post, let me pull out that extra gate, let me clear this whole thing, let me just leave it ready that HTVs can come and go. The scrap yard has moved. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not gone, it's just moved. Is that what I mean? I don't know many lorries we had in there. At one, day, at one stage it was like Piccadilly Circus. I had to like shuffle this lorry to get that lorry to move that lorry to get the other lorry out. Like I have a pretty big yard, but you couldn't have got moving. It was a good job I didn't have any machinery work on my own to be doing because you couldn't have got moving in the yard. It was just, it was hectic. Like now the way farming is, to have run something like that and it doesn't clash with the farming calendar, the farming programme on the particular farm, to say everything worked out well. As far as that was concerned, we didn't miss out on any of the farming activity. We weren't doing anything that couldn't wait to be done on all their days, so there wasn't. So I am currently paralleling a couple of furs. See the way she's diagonal and she's not oh, even yeah. pulled up behind me. Pull a couple of furs into Alan's field here for him. So there'll be nothing parking down here. This is a car park field. Yep. We well. now have to start and buy steel roads to run down the middle to try and get the cars in and out. Mm -hmm. I have had a nightmare this week. Just, it has just dawned on me with the forecast. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to do because I can't have everybody get home with a sour taste in their mouth about how they got their car out of this site. Even the headaches of the car park, like all of a sudden going right, the field might carry, but we'll need a track down the middle. And that just, the mats was a great job, but I, I'm not even asking what the price of them are. Like that's just phenomenal car park field then that we were going to use had the abandoned ship just too wet couldn't i just couldn't operate on it at all right it's four days now to on the pool and this is the scenes we have we are slinging in mats because the field is wet and our john's working hard that's only time i ever seen john get hands there it's nice to see him but... and he's wearing gloves <laughs> dump trailer for stones and it's just great Trying to save the field, trying in the middle of the whole thing to save the field from being annihilated by us. Yes. Padding around and tracking Padding around. around. Oh, look at the swings of this thing. This field will be something else by the time we have the M5 load in. Yay. Oh, sure, it's all right. We've already got off of reseeding so, so this, every now and then. Th this was meant to be the other car park field. Yes. It's the wettest of the three, and we've decided we're going to move over to that car park field to save this one because it's just too wet. Okay, so, so what, is everybody getting their hiking boots on there? Uh, they're going to have to walk across. <laughs> See where I'm rutting here? People are going to walk mm -hmm. from that car park across here. So. At least you're making a wee path for I'm making a wee rut for you to walk <laughs> in, yeah. And Sod's Law too, like there's that field that we couldn't use. I spread slurry just before the ban and it carried 100%. But the way the season went in that particular instance, nope, it wasn't, wasn't a chance of us parking cars on it. So it says a whole lot for the slurry ban and times of when you should spread. Like it's just a load of nonsense. 
Dad's maybe a, a wee bit more relaxed about it actually than I was for once, which isn't normal. I think John's just won him over to his good side that he's he gets away with it. Living the dream. I'm living the dream. I've, I'm on the roller coaster. Most days it's like, <laughs> why, 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 why do this? What notion did I take that I had to do this? Look, I'll be great. Team Remy, Mark is just the business. He's on the ball. He like. is. He's Mark at his box with me. He's on it. He's Mister Get It Done. Mm -hmm. I have. They're both cousins here, so as yes. Andrew, we're all three of us as cousins. Like Mark's his cousin as well. It's a family affair. <laughs> so Andrew's on the digger here. Andrew's phenomenal on a digger. Mm -hmm. He's sitting up that gateway with well, Matt's coming to put on at the start of the week. We, we may be putting a hard track down one of Alan's wee Lincoln fields to get us into the new car park field. Yes. Because hiring Matt's is also it's it's expensive. Bad expensive. Yeah. Similar on a par to hiring a grandstand. Um, <laughs> so we've gone from probably a break-even show to a loss-making show, but. It's still going to be a show. This is a long-term investment. We're building year on year on year. It just came in here day after day. It was like, oh, well, we need more concrete. That's fine, six grand. We need um, a grandstand of, quotes, 25, 20, 20K. Well, look, if we need it, we need it 12K there in mats. You know, it just, our world was just in thousands, which for me, you know, frugal <laughs> in, in ways. It was a lot, um, you know, in the back of my mind, although these are scary figures, you were thinking, we must create a good event. You know, we have to create something that people, people are coming from England, so there was someone from Ohio and Norway, and you know, a third of our people were, were traveling up from the south. We had to create something brilliant, and, and we take the responsibility seriously, that, you know, we wanted to deliver the best event possible um, under the conditions we had. I love Mark. I talk with my hands, yes. <laughs> I get the guns out and point out. Oh, yeah, 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 the guns out, like, yeah. So, you'll get a very different perspective from Mark whenever you talk to him about Yes, his stress levels are, are higher than yours, which is surprising, you know? Well, that reason mine aren't stressed is because I. Because have of Mark. My wingman, you know? <laughs> yeah. Tell us how your on the pole experience has been. Well, Tuesday went home soaked, Wednesday went home soaked. And today, and today is sort of 50 50, so I might go home. So, everything nicely planned out, and then it's just going to complete toss because of the weather. So, and in between that, you've got the sort of tractors, people going about tickets. People going about tickets? Would people ever go about tickets? Would they? Yes, farm flex, yes. Yeah. I, I'm really, I'm really sorry, but uh, we we can't we can't let any more in. I, I thought I've, I've basically been turning turned away people for the last two weeks. No, that's no problem at all. Here, hope it all goes well. Yes, thank you, and thank you for being subscribed and stuff. So it's great, great to have people on board with us. You're gonna, you're making them cry, aren't they? Yeah. Don't be a big yeah, man now, Mark. Don't be a big man. Just it's all right. Phone never stopped all week. The the support phone because people were still wanting tickets, still. Competitors wanted in, people wanted to bring the tractor still. I know it was frustrating for people. I, I had to talk to a lot of people on the phone and, and just explain to them why. Uh, they didn't really understand that, you know, we knew if we were going to bigger, the whole thing would turn into a mess and no one would be happy. Why not come and make the weekend out of it? Uh, last year we had so many people from down south, across in England, Scotland. I would advise to get hotels booked as soon as possible. Get those tickets booked for our event, then get straight on to the hotel. Just come and enjoy it. As farmers, you know, we need a wee weekend off every now and again. And what perfect way, big weekend. Tickets on sale from Sunday the 3rd of March. That's when they kick off. And we will be closing them at the end of March, 31st of March. If you want a ticket, get it bought. People can see, oh yeah, and they know you put a bit of work into it, but they don't know the half of it. And what Mark done was, it was unreal. And I was quite happy for Mark to be there because it meant I could slide away off to the side and just I use the field there, John, you tear away. This is the first time you're doing work on. All right, all right. Go on, yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, there you go. How tight do we need her? Well, safe to say I don't have fancy apparatus like this about my pace. Apparatus? <laughs> so it need a wee bit more rust for you. You may direct them in. You're meant to be doing your job. You're Record this. You have to know the wee. Doot doots and this here. I'll hold the camera and you can do the wee doot doot. <laughs> On the lead up, like the week before the event, you want everything set up as much as you can get done 
early that week that has to be sitting ready so you never know what comes up, what goes wrong, you want to be ahead of yourself. We got held up two days with weather that we couldn't do much. Stress levels at ads is phenomenal. That's you. That's me. James Rooney, Mr. Red Rock. Hello. Well, how are you? Under pressure. Uh, I can only imagine. I I do love your concentration face, but I haven't okay. even I haven't even Get the tongue out. I haven't even timed the slobber here because. <laughs> what would you do if you scratched the trailer? That's what I'm scared of. God it's, forbid you scratch a trailer. But like John's already said, it is what it is. I've asked. Says that now. Wait until yeah. he sees the first score on her. They took a red rug down. Took it down the aisles. They left hay one day just for a bit of crack for a blog and like this wee tiny tiny black rub was on it. Was that me? Was it? That was you. You. Confessions day. Confessions day as to who actually done it. Was me. A hundred percent was not me. Oh, well, well annoyed that we put a wee mark in this trailer, you know. By the time the two weeks was over, and them two trailers that we had took the rails off had humped everything in the field, out the field, all them pallets were set down, and like I'd, I'd used mats and stuff to try and save the floor, but plenty of marks on the floor of my, of my Red Rock trailers now, like. Can't be any worse than the score you left on or come up the road. I did touch nothing. Thank Apart you. from the roundabout. Doesn't count at all. That's fine. This is like Ned directions here. On you. Yes, yeah, so John, I know I'm. Trying to be gentle here. I love his hand signals. I don't. <laughs> this is the farm flex equivalent of open heart surgery. <laughs> it's like, what is this? What is this? So that's Kreiner. Kreiner, right? It depends what road you want to go. The official up and down, I learned on the site one time, is this is up, uh -huh. this is down, this is little bit. Yeah. It's gentle, very soft. Yeah. You may want to help him do this later on when he's on his own. Oh, right, okay. So this is. I get to learn the the winky dinky. Need to see what these hand movements are like. Because not everybody's very good at it. Look at that. Look how much that's sticking out. Just not good enough. So it's coming on the rain tonight again. Saturday, thundery showers and a moderate breeze. Starting there at about 12 o'clock. Sunday, light rain and a moderate breeze. Monday, thundery showers and a gentle breeze. Do you know John's worried about this rain that you can see all the way over there? Yes, I'm, I'm worried about it as well. But like, like I said to him, it's all the way over there. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna come over here. It's easy saying that. Be optimistic. I'm, I'm trying to be. I'm trying it's over to there. Be. I'm trying to be. Look at all that rain. It'll be great to have these war stories to tell. Do you remember the wet year? We're on, on the pole. Just across tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to help? I'll What should we hands there? Would oh, like the no. hands get hurt there? Wouldn't be like it. I'm getting spilled on. <sighs> Rachel's is complaining again. Yeah, watch this. This is pretty fancy. It is. This is this is the, the sign of a good digger man. Mhm. Mm wow. You can tie a knot. No, watch this. This is the fancy bit. <laughs> you had to do it on camera, didn't you? Right, two. Right. Go on, try and do it properly this time. <laughs> try and do it properly. Oh, there he is. There you go. Second time's a charm. <laughs> raging, raging he is. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello, John. Yes. Hello, Emma Butler's here. Uh huh. Oh, it's okay for Ryan to leave stuff off at the set place tomorrow at 8 o'clock? Absolutely, yep. Ryan, and then he's, if that gives you time then to get all set in place for them, okay? Yep, not a problem. Fantastic, thanks, Knight. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Butlers, they supplied marquees, and we'd said to them, like, they couldn't get their vans in, parked at the side of the road, the men just humped the stuff on top of their shoulders, carried it across, just proper workers. 
Uh, they knew we were under pressure normally, like that was extra work than they normally have to do. Normally they'd just be on site, out of the van, set up. Never complain once, any time speaking to them, always smiling, bit of chat. It's nice when you see, we're doing our best to help our business and they're doing their best to help theirs and that's the kind of people I respect. Uh, so like hats off to them, it was like, if they'd been asking me to hump across my back, oh, you'd have to get me on a good day like. That's a serious bit of slipping. Oh, she's stuck. She's bait. See what the shit tires are made of now, sir. No, girl. What the hell? Please. Please, what the hell? <laughs> right. Back of the day. Take two. Yeah. At least the camera ones and the ones there to see it. Yeah. But this is what people don't see. You know what I mean? They see setting up stuff. They just, just, people don't see. Same as every model, so it's always just organized. Why do we do this? Why do we do it? Why do you organize it? You are right, you are right. I love them armchair commentators. Yeah, I see them all the time. Who do nothing but tell yeah. you how you should have done it. Lovely. See that type of grass there? See how they're kind of white scuffing out there? Uh huh. Out there. It's just surely working out there. Yeah. Like, this part of the field isn't too bad because it's kind of. Dry. It's not tearing up too much, but I'll show you next door. He's loving life. Look, look at the state of him. These hand signals are something else. Look, I'm telling you. You know, like do 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 do. You cannot multitask <laughs> if your life depends on what. Like. <laughs> I think you're trying to tell me something. She's yarn in your ear, like. <laughs> <laughs> right, go again. <laughs> right, where do you want me? No, because I want to. See, that's perfect. You see, do that about 10 more times. I could not have done this without Mark. He just kind of ran with it. You know, in February, when I sort of like, here, we're going to do this, he just ran with it. I mean, the coordination, the organization, the planning, the logistics, the booking, the researching, the all of it, and then on the ground on the day, I mean, just Mr. Fix It and Go A to B C D and in support. I hadn't intended to have Andrew there with the digger, you know, for a fortnight, a full fortnight of like just building site, fixing site, straightening up site, helping. He had to help build the grandstand even because we couldn't get a telehandler in. The people around me, the Sterling family, the Clydes for giving us the land and helping let us. I mean, I took over the Clyde yard for a month, a full month from we started building bringing HTVs in till we took the last HTV load out and all the washing, I mean, a week's worth of washing stuff when it's over. I've been nephews washing, John had washed, I'd washed. I can't say much, my yard's always a mess anyway, but it just was more of a mess than it normally is. It was between machines coming back down into the yard, trailers coming back, mats coming and getting washed would sort of gathered up maybe an acre of a field in the yard. But we've got it all scraped up again and it's, uh, Piled up the dry and it'll be respread again across the, the field in the spring. That evening, once everything was away, later on in the evening, I drove out to inspect and view the situation. And the laying, you would have knew there had been a lot of muck on it, but it was well brushed. And it would only take a shower of rain for to rectify that. So. Yeah, on a good dry year, you wouldn't have had any of that headaches. This was the year for headaches. And I was going to say we brought it on ourselves, but really John brought it upon us, so we'll just blame John for that. I'm just so thankful to have all these people around me that made the dream happen. It's... There are no words. Look! I know! The good... Look at this! The good pull The good pull Get us something. Get us something. Quick, quick. That's up, but I need... No good in the thing. I know, I know. You think you'd be special by now? You can't even be ropes or nothing. Ha 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 ha!
Oh, he loves it. It is now raining. It's now raining. Are you going to walk? See these boots? You're going to walk? They're made for walking. Wow. So that's it. We're heading like that gate. I'm going to go milk some cows. All right. See you next week. Bye. We have little tracks. They aren't too bad. At least two more loads to go. And this, and it's getting very windy and wet. Look at that. That's where he got to. And then he had it back all the way up. Didn't have that set up in time to show me giving you presents. What a kind fella I am. I'm giving you presents too, y'all. You're gonna give me big ruts in the ground to see. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> what are you what are you feeling about things right now? That let's not talk about that. Right, this is the other bit he's kinda clarried. We've done our best, I suppose, to work around it. John still left big ruts taking concrete barriers out to the field. It, just, it couldn't be avoided. Although I had to have a wee discussion if you take the same track every time. Don't try just, we're going to mess up a bit, we'll just mess up the one bit. Don't don't ask old Tom what he thinks about the ruts. <laughs> is he raging, is he? I'll, uh, I'll not be, well, I'll get the brunt of it, you'll not get any. Okay, that's, that's, that's all that matters to me. You're as long as Tom play. still loves me when I'm finished. <laughs> Do you know, on several different occasions, we've been asked the, can people hold events here every time? Not sure. Sure. Nope. Never allowed. Really? Yep. So you're, you really are the golden boy. I like being Tom's favourite son. Uh, <laughs> a wee bit of drifting goes on happens here now, all. Maybe she does. I was going to say you should just stick to the same run, should you not? Uh, well, that's easy said. Aren't you bringing four runs there, as you can oh, see? Oh well, yeah, she is sort of. <laughs> Camera maybe can't see that. Sorry, Ra Rachel's there uh, smiling as it's uh, not her feet getting bricks. Hey, you something for nothing. Some mess. Some absolute mess. Hey, this is where the last time I kind of run out of puff. But I want to cut her around and gun her kind of thing, but I don't want to have to get those. Oh, we're going to make it now. Last time I didn't make it. <laughs> you had to reverse back to the gate there with her. Aye. Tom's going to love that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to be busy with his wee brush tonight. Getting this all cleaned up. Uh, Mark, Mark looks very professional in his uh, high-vis. I like his orange coat. Hey, he's looking well. What kind of shape is that, sir? What kind of shape is that? Stop, of stop your greeting. Look at the state of it. I was laying the shops. Was it even a date? I was bought from the shop half an hour ago. They made a great format, wouldn't they? Oh, I knows how to keep the hands in the pockets well. <laughs> uh, Blue rang me there. They have two hundred of the small mats sitting. Right. Um, I reckon well they didn't for that. I've played that field. They go near the pad across. They can't, they can't deliver to Tuesday, but he says we can go and lift them if we want. They're not corner. Those common pals, you know the crates? By Freddy, we're back on schedule. The man is a legend. He's placing barriers, they're perfect, they look amazing. So much better at placing them than fight, fighting with a telehandler. He can just adjust and shift and just do amazing things with a digger. And we're back on schedule. We're good to go. Plan to hit the, hit the thing hard on Monday morning for the week of the event. This could be a disaster. This is the day the sailor gets scored. Watch that space. Oh, watch that space. It's all right. I think Andrew's already done it. Oh, did it? Mm. He definitely touched her a couple of times. You know how you go know warm? Hi. When John takes the coat off. Has he the coat off? No. Wait, where's he went? Oh, I can't zoom in this. I have never seen Connor concentrate so much. Does Connor make you nervous? No, no. <laughs> it's it's like a circus today. Yeah. And our Tom just watching on.
even a couple of days getting rained off that we're like, right, we have to hold off, trying to save the field. How long do you hold off for trying to make that decision? It had to be done, it had to be set up. We were scared of wrecking the field too soon and then people not being able to actually walk across. And Monday morning is when I start getting these calls. Here, are you going to head with us? 